Hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here at San Diego Comic-Con 2024. Once again at the Marvel Hasbro booth, or at the Hasbro booth with the Marvel team. I am here with Ryan, what's up? Dwight, Dan, and Dan. Yo, yo. All right, how are you guys doing? How's, how's your convention going today? You guys having a good time? This is his first San Diego Comic-Con, so first shout out one. to Dan. It's been going great so far. It's great meeting the fans. Just did the panel, great reactions. We have Dragon Man down there in the cases. Everybody's loving it. It's going well. Awesome, hey, good to see a new face on the team. Pleasure to meet you. I, yeah, man, I've been enjoying the work. I enjoyed the panel, some really good stuff over there. Um, I, I have a couple of questions that are sidelined for later, but uh, getting onto my, I have a third question here that is okay to ask right now, and I wanted to talk to you about head and neck articulation really quick. So I had a couple other questions before this. So just getting into head and neck articulation, I'm, I, I started a little debate online about ball joint with the hinge okay. versus a ball joint at the neck and a ball joint at the head, and I wanted to know what your feelings about that articulation was and the possibility of incorporating more figures that have like a ball joint system at the base of the neck and a ball joint at the head to increase mobility on the figures as much as possible. I personally do like that the hinge can make figures look up a lot, but there, it doesn't give you a lot of tilting kind of mobility. So has that been something that you guys have been working on or a point that you're trying to include more into the line? Yeah, well, as with everything in Legends, there is no one answer for everything. Every character and costume design requires us to look at them each individually and try to find what we think is going to be the best uh, system for that specific, specific design. Um, and that can vary from, yeah, disc to ball to double barbell, you know, and maybe things that we haven't even discovered yet you know Ooh, new, new head and neck articulation why not we're always looking to <laughs> and we're always looking to improve the figures you know with the you know the advancements over the last five years with the inkjet and the penless you know we're always you know open to changes and trying things sometimes they work amazingly sometimes they don't work so well and that's okay because if we were just kind of stuck with this is the system and we didn't evolve or weren't open to change you know, it wouldn't be as, the line wouldn't be as uh, special or successful or growing the way it is. You know, everybody would be like, "Okay, I already got that guy. Let's move on." Whereas, you know, we're always trying to find different things and ways to improve and make these things as amazing for you, your our, our wonderful, amazing fans, and everybody around the world. Nice. All right. So there's not just one way of doing things that you, you have. A Okay. There's my way of doing things. There's I different prefer, ways. I prefer that, but I'm often told by Ryan that that is the wrong way, and that's oh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Just me. Yeah, <laughs> Taking heat for it. <laughs> All right. And then one complaint that I've heard a lot from people is that shoulders tend to be really low on a lot of the figures. I actually notice it once in a while. It's not like every figure, but like the Astonishing Wolverine. It, it seemed like the shoulders kind of do sit like oddly a little on the low side. And that's a gripe that just came from the internet to your faces. So I just wanted to bring that to you guys. Which face? All four of your faces. I'm looking all the, all the ones I'm looking at. Yeah, and all those faces too. They they, they all get to hear the complaint. Um, do you want, oh, you just gonna move what? on to the next one? Yeah, oh, that's so easy. Well, that's I mean, I didn't know you had an answer. So I have answer. I have I have opinions on uh, everything. Uh, yeah, let's that wasn't a question. hear it. Was, let's, <laughs> it's more of a well, what's with the low? Sh yeah. Well, so what's your response? When we look at the different articulations that go into the torsos on a character like the Astonishing Wolverine, which has the butterflies, to meet our standards of uh, quality, it requires, as you noticed the other day, with the pins that go through, if you cut those right. things shorter, it allows them to move. Well, yes, we can't cut them shorter, or they'll, uh, or they might Talk, fail yeah. our quality concerns. This is uh, I showed this to him the other day about and how I put the nubs at the end of the butterfly joints that's what he's referring to yeah and sometimes when we're doing figures of different scales of, of any different scale from you know just a couple of millimeters to to not uh, that the requirements for the thickness of the upper part of the articulation to the lower to the to what connects to that uh, butterfly in the top and bottom needs to be substantial enough to support that and sometimes that means that things need to be slightly adjusted just a millimeter or two because the top might need to become thicker which might make it look like it's lower but it might just be more traps and i'm not saying that some of them might you know you know that from time to time when we're doing all these different figures and we don't like to use the, when we're making something from scratch, we don't like to use the same build system every time because then it looks 
like, okay, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. It's like Dan and the team spend a lot of time making sure everything is done unique and special so that they look more vibrant and unique because your shoulders, your shoulders, my shoulders, all of them are different and it all, you know, you know, and sometimes it looks better than others and that's fair, but it's, it's always just kind of something that we're working on to make sure that it's safe that it'll function properly and uh, we're always mixing it up so that the systems are different so that could be part of why some are a little bit higher some are a little bit lower some are a little bit larger um, we've been doing that on some of the figures of late we've been pushing to get some of the shoulder sizes a little bit more beefed up yeah I noticed that it so. pushes into that butterfly a little and yeah then, like Dwight said it's you're losing a little room there on the top and bottom of the butterflies but that's a trade-off for that bulkier shoulder Gotcha. I have, right. droop, I have droopy shoulders, so I appreciate the representation. <laughs> Thank you. I feel seen. Thank you. <laughs> um, I love when you guys include, <laughs> that's like the best answers. No, they're like that because my shoulders are droopy, okay? That's why. No, but um, I love it when you have a character that, uh, that comes with two facial expressions. Mm -hmm. And um, not every single figure needs it, but uh, this is coming from the ruckus. That's that, that's where I first heard it, and I was like, "That's brilliant!" For every figure to have a neutral and angry expression, head to go with them. I think that that's like more of a request, I guess, than a question. But also, like when you do do that, I, I absolutely love it. I think it's it, like it, it takes the figure to another level. So, like with the Luke Cage, not the two pack one, but you know how a lot of people had said that with that one, the classic Luke Cage. How it would be nice to have an angry one to go along with it. So more. Dual expression head sculpts, please. Okay, more, yeah. more, more my request. Okay. And then um, we saw a couple of scale issues with Danny Catch and Warbird, which I haven't been able to get a hold of. And but you know, Danny Catch I haven't gotten either. So I don't have either of those figures in hand yet. But um, what what would you say causes that kind of scaling issue? Like like what's the result of that? Is I'm sure I assume it's not on purpose. I. Honestly, I'm not quite sure what the the. They look a little small. Like the Danny Ketch looks too small. I've seen that in a review. I've been avoiding the Warbird reviews because uh, I don't I haven't gotten it yet. But oh, well, us as I mean, Danny Ketch is smaller than the Johnny Blazes in the past because Johnny Blaze was built on a lot of existing parts from Star Lord, which oh. were one of our taller figures of the time, and we actually felt as a team that the Johnny was. Let me take that back. I felt that the Johnny was too tall. Oh. So when we got a chance to do uh, Danny, I wanted to make him more appropriately scaled uh, because I always felt that the Johnny was actually too oversized and too long of a leg. Gotcha. Let's be honest, man. It's based off of my height, and you wanted me to feel seen, you know, as a Danny to Dan. Come on, man. These guys are very passionate about their work. They're very, like, clearly if you, involved. If you clearly look at this lineup, the only one in this lineup that shouldn't be seen is this guy. These, the, the rest of these guys, you know. Well, you were the Captain together. America. You were the Infinity War Cap. I remember that. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Which, you, which you kindly included with uh, the, what, uh, the Outlanders. Yes. You put the Outlanders with them. Um, i got to give a shout-out to x Man 87 for calling that boulder tease. I think he was the first one to call out that boulder tease. He was also the first one to really call out the Odin reference because uh, me, Century Productions, and x Man 87 did a hard, deep dive trying to figure out where that Odin design came from. And we think it's from an old 2008 Bowen statue or something. Is that is it possible to confirm where the inspiration for that Odin came from? Yeah, uh, it was pulled from multiple sources, but yeah, the Bowen statue was a very a strong piece that we were impressed by back in the day. So working with Jesse very closely, he wanted us to really uh, develop a version of him that could be a definitive Odin that people could use for different eras. So we kind of took element pieces from multiple places to pull them together. Different comic runs, uh, the Bowen statue, uh, different, sta different other pieces of reference from lore to pull together a version with the multiple looks and the multiple headdresses so that you could have something like the ceremonial crown, which definitely looks much uh, older and classic, where the horned big battle crown looks a bit more modern. And there's even a version with no crown at all that just has his hair pulled back. 
So there's three different versions, and two of them, the ceremonial crown and the long hair head is locked in place, and it doesn't really move too much, which is also why we included the battle crown that doesn't that has the long hair removed, so you can have a version of Odin that's way more poseable for different types of for all audiences. So that if you want to go more aggressive with your dioramas, we got an option in there for you to, to have some fun with that as well. Gotcha. I, I ask you guys a lot of questions, and, and I, I know I push, but like with. With that particular figure, I am just exceptionally thrilled for that freaking thing. I think it's it it hit me in the eyeballs real hard, like a heat wave. It, I I absolutely love that thing, and I can't wait for more figures in the future to come out in that direction. I just thought, yeah, you guys like really nailed it. I can't wait to. I got to play with it a lot too, so I don't own that figure yet. But you were gracious enough to let me pose it around over at the breakfast, and I can't wait to have one in my own collection. And you did an awesome pose, man. For real. Oh, you liked it? Yeah, right on. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and it wasn't too hard to do. So I really appreciate that, and I love that you guys are changing and doing different things as you move along. There's like one thing when I come back and I do the, these interviews, you guys are always doing something different. You're not stagnant, and I love that change that that you guys do that. So I really appreciate that. And uh, I want to thank you guys for your time. Hope you guys all have continue to have a great San Diego Comic Con 2024. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Hey, let me show you some Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.